What's up, everybody, and welcome back to A Beer Day with TK. It's a beautiful summer evening here in Finley, Ohio, and Anders and I are hanging out in the beer shed, getting ready to check out a new beer. Now, as this is a Wednesday, we're going to do a WTF Wednesday review. For those of, you, those of you who may be new to the program, WTF Wednesday is the one day a week when we showcase a beer we normally wouldn't. Sometimes this means we do stuff from the Big Boys, Bud Miller, and Coors. Sometimes we try stuff from smaller breweries, but maybe odd flavors or different styles. And then sometimes we try to get our international swerve on by trying some things from other countries. So today we have Flying Horse Royal Lager from United Breweries out of Daruhera, India. Have you ever had an Indian beer? Yes, I've had a couple, not many. Yeah, yeah I know there's, um, remember that one that I had that was six years old that I bought up at the gas station thing up the road? That was an Indian beer. No, I don't. Yeah, it was terrible. Well, I'll say this, it wasn't very good, but for being six years old, it was serviceable. Like it got by, it wasn't as bad as I thought, but it wasn't anything special. I think I might have had one or two other ones. Is there one called like Taj Mahal or something? That sounds familiar. I think I might have had it at like an Indian restaurant or something somewhere, but you know, probably years ago. I don't see many of them. I can't see you eating Indian food. No, I don't. I usually just complain that it's spicy and it's going to ruin my stomach. But when I worked with the, the Saudi prison management program, the Saudis would always want to eat Indian food. So we'd always have to stop there. And usually I would go to like the Wendy's next to it or something, but then would meet them there and have a beer while I'm waiting for... You know, the because other you're side. an uncultured heathen. Yeah, I am, indeed. This actually says it's uh, from Bangalore, India. On Untapped, it said Daru Hero. I don't know, maybe that's like the state and the city or something. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know very much about Indian geography. Nor do I. So this says for export out of India on the side, too. So that's a little different. So maybe this is different than the version they have in India. Uh, stats on it, 4.7 ABV. I couldn't find anything on the IBUs. It actually does surprisingly well. Um, untapped to 3.19, beer aggregate to 3.06. I mean, I think that's pretty solid for what I'm guessing is a macro-esque type lager. It says that it's lager, right? Yeah, royal lager. So it's brewed and bottled under license from United Brewers Limited. Where is it actually brewed? But in Bangalore, India, by Blossom Industries. But that's probably just like, don't they do like Foster's as in Canada and the U.S. and everything like under license from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something similar. Now, what is interesting. For, for export out of India. So this is export only, I guess. When you go to the Beer Advocate write-up on this, it says Flying Horse Royal Lager Beer, the Champagne of Beers. Superior malt, aromatic hops, yeast, and crystal clear water are transformed by the skill of the brewmaster into a beer fit for you, the connoisseur. Now, I'm, I'm interested to see what Miller High Life has to say about this, as I was under the assumption they were the champagne of beers. But it appears I've been wrong all this time. It's really flying horse champagne of beers. We have to do a head-to-head -head battle between those. We've got to find another one of these and do a Miller that High would be Life. Funny. High Life versus this, the double champagne of beers showdown, dude. That would be ridiculous. Well, I'm excited to finally try a beer that's brewed where it says it's from. Yeah, yeah. Unlike the last few that were all... Yeah, they say they're in, in Holland Ethiopia, or whatever. They're really in Holland, or they're in Haiti, and they're really in Holland. Yeah, this one's actually price. He paid six fifty for this from what did it say? What? Warren Beverage. Warren Beverage was that Warren, Ohio? No, no, it's up in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, on Warren Road, which turns into West One Fiftieth. Oh, oh it's got a neat cap underneath this gold foil. It's in a little uh, little shopping center. That I probably just scratched the hell out of when I rubbed this thing on it. Flying horse, a little yellow cap. Oh, it says Blossom Industries Limited up there on the top it of it. It does. I'll try to get a photo of it if I remember. How do you feel about this gold leaf on the bottles, man? It's annoying. I'm not a fan of it, to be honest. I think it's like the cheap version of wax. Wax. I think when I initially found the wax ones, I liked them. And then after a while, I realized that they're a colossal pain in the ass. I mean, I understand the point of the wax. It's to seal it. Yeah, but then I had to cut it off with a hacksaw. Remember that, man? That, yeah, I remember that. The that, bottle. That, yes. But go I, back, I, I, there's a video somewhere of me cutting off with a hacksaw. That was a fun time watching you. I'm surprised you still have all your fingers. I was a little pissed, to be honest, dude. I wasn't thrilled. But I think the foil is like the ghetto version of the wax. Yeah. It, all right. It's supposed to look fancy, but I don't think it really serves a purpose. Not the greatest pour on my behalf. Um, ton of carbonation. This thing's going wild. First things first, Brew HQ chart. 
I heard Dom throwing some shade. This is a, this is a thing of beauty. This is very valuable. Maybe I'll autograph and put it on eBay, and then I'll buy it myself for a bunch of money and pretend it's valuable. What do you think? One, One. two. Yeah, it's yeah. it's very light straw colored, clear. You can see straight through this thing. We're back to our jam jars today. Hey, mine, yours is gone. Mine still got a little bit, you know, finger and a half of this kind of white fish-eyed kind of head. Looks all right. Yeah, mine's dissipating quickly. Yours is kind of sticking around. Yeah, mine's hanging about. Let's give it a sniff. It's not what I expected. No, I was expecting adjuncty corn and rice. skunkiness yeah. and, and Euro lager normalcy. Yeah, it's not. This is obviously just like light grassy, light bready. Yeah. Nothing Not much of anything. Just no, very, very faint smell. Ready. Yeah. Smells all right. I really expected it to be a skunky smell coming from India. Because yeah. who knows what that travel was like. Or how long it's been on the road to get here or right. whatever. Yeah. That's the only problem with a lot of the international beers is... I mean, it's, it's, it's dated May 2022. Is that Best Buy or when it's made? Manufactured. No, MFD, manufactured. So, that's, so it's been in this bottle for a year. Yeah, 13 months roughly, right? I mean, so we're at just about June, getting into the end of June. So yeah, 13 months. Middle of yeah, June. Let's give it a shot. Cheers. To our enemies' enemies, our friends. Body is, is light, for sure. Taste is, is interesting. It's not what I thought it was going to taste like. No. There's definitely a bit of sweetness to it. Um, Almost some adjunct sweetness to it. Yeah. I don't know not quite, but approaching yeah. that level. Yeah. Corn. You know, corn and rice, so they have like a very distinct sweet taste to it. That's, I wonder if it doesn't say ingredients on here anywhere. Not that I saw. No. But does it taste like champagne? Ah. I don't. I will say this. It's not bad. It's honestly not that bad. I expected it to be hot trash and just so it'll be an interesting check-in or an interesting video because it's a nice international beer, but it's, I don't right. think it's that bad. No, I really thought it was going to be a, a disgusting garbage. Yeah, almost drain pour. Yeah, drain pour beer. It's got an odd sweetness to it, though. Flying Horse Royal Lager Beer. Yeah. I mean, what do you get out of it? I, I will say this. It's not super... Um, complicated. There's not a ton of things going on. Hops, not much. I mean, no. Negligible hops, if any. <clears throat> as far as the taste, I would say probably light bready malt. Um, maybe tiny bit of a grassy thing going on too, like you picked not, up on the nose. Not much else. But, but not a lot more. Although there is that, that sweetness is there for sure. Right. Which I will assume is coming from some kind of adjunct ingredient. But it's not gross. Usually the adjunct corn or rice taste. The rice one I can't really mess with. I don't like that rice taste. Um, it's got a little bit of sweetness, but it's not offensive. It's inoffensive. No, no, not at all. Yeah. No, like I said it's, it's almost got that adjunct sweetness, but it's not mm. quite there, and it's not enough to be offensive. Now, here's the one thing. I mean, I know I don't really eat Indian food or anything spicy, but Indian food is notorious for being a little on the hotter side, and obviously temperature-wise, very warm country, at least many parts of it are very warm. Um, I wonder if the nice sweetness of this would cut, you know, if you had a spicier kind of food, if you had that nice little light, sweet, I mean, it's definitely crushable, light, refreshing kind of a beer. If you had that little bit of sweetness to it, you know, as a counterbalance, it didn't work out well. I would think that it would. I mean, I'm sure this is nice to drink when it's blistering hot out. Yeah. I mean, maybe we should have been drinking this at uh, two in the afternoon when we were moving all that scrap wood. We were doing, we were moving the scrap. I redid my deck, as I probably mentioned in the video. And we had to remove all the old boards and everything. And I thought I was going to die. It was so unbearably hot. It wasn't even hot. It was just humid. It was unbearably humid and uncomfortable. And it made for a terrible... It was probably the perfect time for a flying horse. Oh, show. So let me ask you this. If this is the sh champagne of beers, prefer this or prefer Miller? I can't tell you the last time I had a Miller. Was it High Life? That's the yeah. champagne of beers? Yeah. I used to drink it when I was younger sometimes. Like if, if, when it was only macros or your choice, Ice House or that would be my go-to's. Is that the one you put the lime in to make the poor man's Corona? Probably. Or is that MGD? It could be one of those. I don't know. But, I mean, they're very similar. Like they're beers. very, yeah. For me, I would say this is actually a surprisingly decent beer. Again, I don't think it's anything spectacular. 
it's not five stars out of five or anything like that. But I mean, this is serviceable, sessionable, and 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 relatively pleasant. So for me, it would be a big thumbs up for the Flying Horse. The other champagne of beers. Yeah, I'm, I'm presently surprised. I did think this was going to be a garbage beer, mm-hmm. and it turned out to be a, a just a middle of the road decent. You yeah. said crushable beer. Mm-hmm. Probably a really nice beer on a hot day. I'd Defin- give it a thumbs up as well. Definitely macro-esque, but not yes. bad. I mean, it, it's definitely not macro. bad at all. So, you know, I'm, again, shocked on this WTF Wednesday. Two thumbs up for the beer. Hopefully you like the video. If you do, give us a thumbs up. Hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, please hit subscribe. And as always, if you got any comments or questions, jump in down below. Have you had Flying Horse? Or the real question, have you had this and Miller High Life? Because if so, you can tell us which is the real champagne of beers. Let us know in the comments down below. Hey, till next time, cheers. cheers.